Hey everyone, this is Rick from RioSense, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about our chip cleaning station, which can be used on both the MVROC and the Microvis. Um, so what I'll go over is, you know, basic um, assembly. There's a couple parts that need to be assembled onto the chip cleaning station. I'll go over a little bit about the um, different protocols that are preloaded on the chip cleaning station, and which protocols to use for which chip. And finally, um, I'll also talk a little bit about how the, the protocols can be customized to fit your particular application and testing requirements. All right, so let's get started. All right, so when you open up the box, what you should have are these components. So you'll have the main chip cleaning instrument. You'll have three bottles for different solvents for the cleaning procedures. You'll have a power cable, power adapter, the holding tray for the solvents, a holding um, circle for the waste bottle, as well as various tubes and a chip clip if you um, are cleaning a microvis. So the first step in the assembly procedure is to attach the waste container holder and the solvent holders. And this is easily done by use of Allen screws. And here I'll flip this over so you can get a better look at it. And so two screws hold the, the solvent um, tray and one screw holds the waste container ring. And everything is included for you to attach these components. All right, now the next step is to attach the tubing onto the bottle cap. And I'd like to start with the, the gas, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the liquid lines, the, the one with the blue connectors. And this can only go into the cap one way. When you look at the cap, the top, you'll see that there are holes that go into the, um, the bottle. And so there's one hole that's larger than the other. And this will only fit into the larger hole. And so once you push that through, it's just simply turning this down. And you want this to be snug so that there aren't any leaks. So that, but you don't have to really crank it down too hard, but just, you know, nice and snug. And now you do the same thing with the, the, gla the, the black gas lines. Just put it in through the top. Turn it down, now you're good to go. And you can see how this part of the tubing goes all the way through the cap. And now you could just put that onto the supplied glass container and you're good to go. And so you want to repeat this with the other two bottles. And so eventually you'll have three bottles that look just like that. All right, now that you've got the bottle cap assembled properly. Before I add any liquid into the glass bottle, I do a quick blast of compressed air. That way, if there's any fibers or dust in the bottle, it won't contaminate my, my cleaning solutions. The last bit of tubing we have to connect now is the one with the beige ends. And this connects right onto the chip cleaning station. So just like with the other tubes, get that in nice and snug so that there aren't any leaks. And so with the MVROC chip, I like to connect the chip first onto the chip cleaning station and then connect the tube to the MVROC chip. And also make sure that the valve is open so that fluid will flow through. And now you're all set. For the microvisc, we have this clip that you use and the clip and the tubing attach through this opening and once that's connected this connects right onto the microvis chip just like that and that connects onto the chip cleaning station and now you're ready to clean your microvis chip okay now that the chip is plugged in and the bottles are all in their correct position, you can turn on the unit using this 
button, this main on off switch in the back. And then that will take you to this home screen. But before you clean the chip, it's a good idea to check to make sure that there are no leaks in the bottles. And you can do that by going to the tools section. And there is a leak test button that you press and that will pressurize the bottles. And, we'll, and it'll see if there's any um, difference in pressure over, over time, basically. So here is the pressure in the bottles. It did not decrease, and so we have that results pass. Other cool features of the uh, tool section are chip test and flow test. And by pressing chip test, you get values here in this column, and I'll zoom in on that. This column says values and is a reference value of 9908 and then an off of 6798. This is basically a UTI test for how the pressure sensors are reacting. And you want these numbers, the CR2, CR3, CR4, and CL4, to be between the reference and the off value. If it's above the reference value, then there could be a problem with the pressure sensors. They could be damaged. And if it's below the off value, then there could be a short circuit in the chip. Another cool test is flow test. And let's go ahead and press that. And what this does is it, it pumps air through the chip. And we're actually measuring the viscosity of air and how the pressure sensors react to the air pressure. Okay, and that passed. This is a nice um, r squared value profile. If this had been skewed where you maybe had um, one of these dots much lower than the rest, then that's an indication that possibly that pressure sensor may also be damaged. Okay, once you pass all the tests, then you can go ahead and clean the chip. And so one thing I want to point out here, here in this top section is the chip ID, and this will match the ID of the chip. There are three different protocols that are loaded onto the chip cleaning station, and you can access those by hitting this button or by hitting the protocols button. Each of the protocols are designed to test a, a certain chip. And so the chip that I am testing today is an A20 chip. And that tells me it's a 200 micron depth channel. And each of the three preloaded protocols has a description on them. And it's easier to just go through each one to look for the protocol that will work for this particular chip. And so this protocol that I highlighted is aqueous low mid, and the description is this protocol is for A100 to 200 micron depth chips and B40, B50 chips, and those are B series chips with a 40 or 50 micron depth. Knowing that my chip is a a chip that's 200 micron then I know this is the proper cleaning protocol for my chip. So earlier I had mentioned that it's important that you have the correct configuration or order of the of your solvents and that's because in some cases the solvent one of the solvents may not be compatible with your sample for, ex um, for example, if you were testing proteins, the first solvent in position A will be the, the solvent that is pumped through first. And if you had maybe mixed up um, Aquet or your buffer with IPA, which is in the second position, if you had flipped that, a lot of times IPA and proteins are not compatible and will cause that to crash out, which could lead to clogging your, your flow channel. 
in this particular case, this cleaning protocol is meant for cleaning aqueous based samples. It's always a good idea to, to test before you clean the chip. Test your sample with the very first solvent. Some cases Aquet is fine, it's compatible with your, with your sample. Sometimes it's not. And in cases where you are cleaning, for example, um, um, a sample that has that was protein based you may actually want to substitute the aquet for your buffer and if that's the case you want to test the buffer with IPA and most of the time IPA will be compatible with just about um, all buffers that are aqueous based but for our example this is aquet this is IPA and this is heptane and once you're happy with the setup You've gone through the tools, leak test pass, flow test pass, um, the chip test values are in between the reference and off, then you're, you're good to go. And basically what you do is you press start and that begins the cleaning process. So I want to also go into a little bit more detail about the protocols. There are three loaded protocols on chip cleaning station but you can create custom protocols if you like and a quick overview of that is if you go to protocols by pressing this button there's a new button here and that will allow you to customize your protocols so for example if you notice that you have a sample that may be a little bit more difficult to clean you can adjust the pumping time or the soak time so that it's more compatible with that sample and as you can see from our list here we've created a lot of different protocols for a lot of different situations and if you find that um, the preloaded protocols just aren't um, adequate then give your rep a call and then we can help you go through how to create a custom protocol for that sample and so this, an ex this is an example of how you can manipulate a, um, a basic protocol and make adjustments to it. Then you can rename it and now you have a different protocol for whatever special application that you have.